What's up guys? My name is Mad Squash 924 Welcome back to another episode of Night's Call. I believe this is now part 14 of our Let's Play this far of this entire game. And we are looking around for new customers and leads and it looks like we have one of our suspects here. So we're gonna go and drive them around and see where they wanna go. Which is good, I'm glad that the, uh, the suspect is here. I kinda was suspecting that wouldn't be the case. I like the street. It looks like a postcard. You've always found it charming. But if you guys haven't seen this before, you guys should know the drill by now for those of you who have. But if you haven't, um, this is more of a visual novel-esque kind of game where it is about all of the drama and mystery. And we are trying to discover who a killer is. Her name is Piret Manderes. And we must go. Your next passenger climbs into the cab and slams the door. The entire taxi shakes for a few seconds. When she tells you where she wants to go, her voice cuts through the night. She has a rather pronounced Spanish accent and a lilt you recognize immediately. You from Marcellis? She lifts her eyes towards yours. Yeah. You pick up on the surprise in her voice. How do you know that? I recognize your accent. No one recognizes my accent. The journals, this are all still think I'm just Spanish. The journalists. She lowers her eyes. Am I supposed to know who you are? I am Pirat Mandaras. She watches you. I am the chef at La Pierre. You nod. I, uh, I don't know it. Before you can even finish your sentence, he flashes you a smile. Don't worry about it. It's too late now, anyway. I'm closing the restaurant. Why is that? We your passenger size. You see we lost a star. We used to have two and now we only have one. I know it seems trivial. It's just a star attributed by a food critic, but it's the beginning of the end of a slow and painful death. I don't want to live through that. So I'm closing. I told everyone tonight we'll finish out the week and, uh, pack up. I'm giving them all two months' pay so they can enjoy the holidays and relax a bit. Something outside catches her eye. We all could really use a break. You're going to leave without putting up a fight? Put up a fight? Hurt your passenger's feelings. You can tell she's angry. That she's taking deep breaths to stifle it. Look, I won't tell you how to do your job, and I'm not going to complain. Out of the question. She looks away. You can tell she's calming down. Like you, we work odd hours, weekends, holidays, throughout the summer. <laughs> I know you get it. She sniffles softly. I make a good living, but even more importantly, I think this is the life I chose. I hope you are also living a life you chose. You. She clicks her tongue and swears, though you couldn't quite hear what she said. The pressure. It's unbelievable. It's what drives us to work hard, be creative, make constant improvements, but when you lose a star, she takes a breath, a break, a much needed one. Her voice was about to crack. <laughs> your whole business falls apart when you lose a star. All your doubts come back to haunt you. No matter what you do, it's a losing battle. If you 
to maintain the quality of your establishment, they call you blind and incapable. If you try to make real change, they say you're not serious. That's your unstable. Her voice is no more than a whisper. <sighs> That's why I'm closing. No more energy. No more desire. No more give a shit. She shrugs. She looks out at the road going by. Are you going to change professions? Me? Change professions? She has a delightful laugh. Never. I started cooking because I love fish and seafood. I'm not going to stop because of all these moronic Parisians. I'm going to get back to cooking in my kitchen and making the food I want to make. The sea contains such beautiful things. I want to get back to fishing, you see. Sticking my hands into fish. She pauses. You notice the frankness of her voice. She talks to you like a friend. You're for Marcellis too. Is that it? You nod. Whereabouts? La Timon. Your neighborhood. Your childhood. Your passenger makes a little noise in reply. Not the best neighborhood to grow up in, I imagine. <laughs> but with the highway right there. She sighs. For a second you can hear the highway buzzing by over your head. Cars going back and forth, day and night. Now though, not the worst. You're not far from your destination now. Your passenger starts talking in a low voice. You can't tell if she's talking to you or to herself. I want to find a little someplace nice near the coast. I have cash, I have time. I have the desire. I've got it all. Her voice drops. I'm going to tell them all to go fuck themselves. She laughs a deep, guttural laugh. You park in front of an unassuming grey building. Your passenger goes to pay you. I live in a tiny apartment, bare bones. I usually have dinner about this time. She sighs. You... Want to come up? You look right at her. Hmm. Okay. But not for long. She flashes you a warm grin. You lock up the taxi and follow her to into the building. She wasn't lying about her place. Small, simple, with no decoration more or less. The strict minimum. She begins to move about the kitchen. You want something to drink? Sure. You watch her uncork a bottle and pour two glasses. You don't miss a single move. Here's Tyrion. Nothing fancy, but it should do the trick. You knew nothing about wine, but you find it exceptional. While she quickly is getting dinner ready, you examine her place. Nothing suspicious yet. It looks like a place owned by someone who works a lot. It's the perfect occasion to rummage around a bit, but you're worried about leaving her alone. Um, where's your bathroom? By the front door, just after the bedroom. You nod and start walking around. It's a really small place. The bedroom looks as narrow as it does comfortable. The bathroom is clean and simple, and that's it. Nothing suspicious. 
No surprises. When you come back, she's done cooking. It's ready. You watch her hand as she prepares your plate. It's soft, efficient, in control. She's a pro. She pushes the plate over to you. A ruby colored tuna filet, cooked on one side, raw on the other. Capers, carrots, a white vegetable you don't recognize. Oh, that's candy pear with ginger. You taste the dish. Refreshing. Light. A bit spicy. You never usually eat anything this exquisite. You see a shimmer in her gaze. She seems... happy. An hour later, you go back downstairs. For the first time in months, you feel calm. Your head is spinning a bit. Just the right amount. You hold tight to the steering wheel for minutes before driving off. And looks like with that, we have to go back to our room. We are out of time. Let's see. How much cash did we make? Profits and balance overall. We made profit. That's good. That's what we wanted to see. At the foot of your front door, just behind a drain pipe, you notice an envelope. It's thick and heavy. You can just make out your name, written in thick black marker on the front. Your real name. You take a deep breath and go inside. In the envelope, you find more information just as Bussett promised. You lay them on the table. You look at the new evidence on the table. It'll take you a while to read everything carefully. Steps in the hallway. They stop in front of your door, then move away. You crack your knuckles and get to work. Okay, we have some more things about investigating our stuff. And we got more pictures of the crime scenes. Okay, let's start moving some stuff around. That just in the crime scene says lust, huh? Interesting. That's for both of them. This is only for you. Interesting. This one is also only for you. Your symbol drawn on the blood. Here didn't say anything about your, your scar. Right. So this is the other lady that we are learning about. This is actually only for you. Jonas believes we are in a simulation. It's weird. He watches you. You could argue he watches you could go to Jonas Pearson. But this is for both of these two. The killer is every one of these heights for everybody, minus her. So let's actually move this over to here then. She doesn't fit the parameter of the killer height. So she's definitely not the killer, obviously. Everybody else does fit the killer's height. Let's see, Lust. He watches you. Victim 2, open the door. The killer. Slit throat written in blood, blood missing. Breaking. Our crime scenes 1 and 3. You could argue this could go to Hervé as well. He watches you. Could go to Jonas, theoretically. Lust. Could go probably to Hervé. Maybe Apollini, because she does she does those vampire things. Because she thinks she's a vampire. I want to move that over to her. It's not actually connected. That's all a conjecture. I want to move He Watches You over to Jonas Gerson. Again, it's conjecture. 
We don't know about this. We don't know about this. I want to put this underneath her vein. These two... I'm not sure. So far, after looking at everything, I feel like it's still more towards Hervé. You could argue the Lusk could possibly go to Hervé, maybe. Because he's kind of weird. Interesting. Okay, let's end the night. With a heavy hand, you wipe your tired face. You slowly open the sofa bed and lie down. The events of the day run through your head. The streets, the passengers, their faces, their problems. You open one eye. For a second there, you hope the evidence board was just a dream too, but you can make it out in the shadows. You get up quickly. And a few minutes later, you're outside of your studio, as night three begins. We need to get fuel at some point, but not yet. Let's look for some more people that we haven't met before, ideally, or customers that are also our suspects. We could also visit the same people that we have in this particular pathway. Um, I just want to check something. I don't think we met this monkey thing. I think it is a monkey. Looks like a monkey to me. Maybe it's not. Or maybe it's a dude in a monkey costume? Who's to say? That guy also looks important. That looks like an Among Us character to me. We still haven't actually visited any of these eyeball places, which we should probably be doing. This one's name is Hugo Delani. So I guess it's a dude. Oh shit, man. What the fuck am I looking at? Your next passenger is holding a bow, which he inadvertently pokes in his eye while getting into the taxi. He leaps into the back seat and looks at you with a lost expression on his face. I'm supposed to be at the Gambetta bus station in less than five than uh, 15 minutes. Um, your seatbelt. You run the first red light you come across with a little luck. Go get this kid to his bus. You see him moping behind you. Shit. Was it really that hard to be on time, bro? You shit stain. You can't miss this bus. You just can't, man. Is everything okay? Yeah, okay. This might sound a little crazy, but uh, what do you think of my Gravia outfit? Gravia? Yeah, it's a race in a game. The bow, the helmet, the armor, you know, all that shit. Uh... It's a costume. A cosplay, not a costume. It's serious business. He sighs heavily and droops his head. Shit. Oh, this is for a chick. I'm so into her, I even started playing her favorite game. Last Legend 5 to make her like me, but I look like a moron. He looks at the time on the meter. You think we'll get there on time? Yeah, yeah, uh, I'll make it happen. Are all taxi drivers as cool as you? You smile in return. I have a question for you. <laughs> you haven't done anything like this for a chick. Uh, yeah. I definitely did some stupid stuff. Much stupider than dressing up. It's not dressing up, it's a cosplay. He turns his bow over. This cosplay is for a uh, convention? Yeah, in Belgium. Maybe thousands of us pose players. It's pretty legit. Will there be a lot of uh, graviers? Graviers. No, I don't think so. They're popular, but the costume is daring. 
you got to flash your abs at everyone all weekend. Yeah, I'm sure it'll be fine. You really think so? Well, it's daring. Plus, if you're the only one dressed like that... It takes a minute to think. You are so totally right. How could she not be into me? You park in front of the bus station. Your passenger hands you a bill to pay his fare. Keep the change. I've always wanted to say that. Good luck with the uh, Gravia thing. Gravia. Yeah, thanks, man. A second later, he's running for his bus. His bow slung across his back. Wow, what a tip. 2.6 euros. Alright, anybody else? Hello. Suspect. Damn it, that's not good. You're driving along when a strange burnt smell suddenly fills the cab. You look around. Sniff. Is it coming from outside? As soon as you see a free spot, you pull over and park. You freeze. Something or someone is in your taxi. A woman's voice resonates around the cab. I can't, I just... I need a better signal. Oh, it's her again. I'm here. I'm here. You turn around slowly. A young woman has appeared behind you. Don't shout. I'm afraid I'll lose the connection. I don't have much time. There's something strange about her face. It's as if she is several different people at once. Listen to me carefully. I come from the future and you must know that you've met. She stops moving like a computer glitch. She stays this way, still, frozen. Then suddenly she starts moving again. Fascists in suits with tons of money and control of social media. In 2037, he decides to cleanse Europe, literally and figuratively. She stops herself. Shit, I'm breaking up. She lowers her head to speak to someone else. The signal is unstable. She turns to you. Her eyes are sparkling. A coalition led by the Iranian president and a few African leaders managed to find a remedy, but it's too late. The human race has been almost entirely decimated. She looks at you. They sent me to look for more information on Hyoga, but also on the other people you may have met. Does the Sean Jackson, Jackson? Jackson sound familiar? You shake your head slowly. You have no idea. He went to mime school. She smiles coyly. We actually know Sean Jackson. Jackson? Why don't keep doing that? Jackson. Um, yeah, he's, um, this guy, right? No, it's Sean Christie. It's somebody else, then. Interesting. I know what you're thinking, but I'm serious. She shakes her head. Tragically serious. She snaps her fingers. Annabelle Robert, a photojournalist. Her reporting will... Her voice suddenly starts to crackle. Reveal the existence of underground laboratories. She absolutely must go to Syria. Life depends on it. The radio starts blaring incom incomprehensible voices like it was picking up a secret station. No physical contact. You will not to get a second chance. The seat behind you is suddenly empty. The young woman is gone. The 
radio stops. Nighttime silence takes its place. For a second, you wonder if you are dreaming. You slowly breathe in and start driving again. She didn't actually leave us any notes. She only leave us clues about certain events. That's interesting. Damn it, and our suspect. Oh, she moved. Okay, good. She's still there. Phew. What's gonna say? Gilda Burger. She's trying to get to Notre Dame. Your next passenger slips into the cab and closes the door with incredible care. Good evening, sir. She's one of the suspects, and her voice rings like a chime. High-pitched. Discreet. Ethereal. Notre Dame de Paris, please. As you pull away, you glance at the time. Not exactly time for a prayer. You drive in silence for a few minutes, glancing at your passenger. She seems so... fragile. You can't imagine her in the act of... My friend and I were wondering if you knew where the secret entrance to the catacombs is. Her question pulls you out of thoughts. Um... A secret entrance. Yeah, you know, the catacombs. There's the main entrance, and there are the hidden ones. They're not open for the public, of course, but that's what makes it fun. The way she said fun made her sound about seven years old. We love to visit them on our own. You shake your head. Unfortunately, you've never heard a thing about a secret entrance. Yeah, I don't know. Sorry. She seems disappointed. I thought a taxi driver would surely know Paris really well. Yeah, but not the catacombs. You attempt to smile. She doesn't react. You've never been. You shake your head again. It's so cool down there in the summer. I go often through the main entrance. A break, and then... No. He doesn't know. I thought so too, but... Apparently, it's not like in the movies. No, we'll find another entrance. Fine then, I'll let you look. You leave your passenger be with whatever is going on in her head. And you drive. From time to time, her voice breaks the silence. Bits and pieces and complete sentences. Maybe she'll tell you something that could help you. Sometimes I don't really understand. But still... I don't think that's the way to go. <laughs> like a dad. You can do it just fine. No. She has a sparkling laugh. <laughs> I didn't know that. How did you find out? Seriously? You're incorrigible. There's a break in their discussion. A few calm minutes go by before she makes a surprise sigh. Wait, that's true. Her eyes dash back and forth like she's speed reading. Speed reading something only she could see. I don't know what I would do without you. You're right. In Book 19, St. Augustine clearly states it. You make a mental note of the book she's referring to. Might be of help at some point. Tongues corrupt man. They keep us apart. And how can we be friends and be apart? The city of God is surely closed. It's... 
She closes her eyes to enjoy the moment. Indutable. She abruptly opens her eyes back up. Her last word rings around the cab. It seems heavy. And... Stifling. What? <laughs> Why, yes, it's true. Jesus is right. We're here. You park. You can feel sweat running down your back. She giggles. I hope to see you again in the city of God. The city of God. She smiles. The city of God surrounds us. It is within us. It is built upon honest faith and shared friendship. And when Rome falls again, we will be protected by the walls of the city. I can. She stops. Her face is suddenly expressionless. Yes, all right. Sorry, I have to go. She adds almost as in aside. It's a wonderful book. She drops money into the front seat more than enough for her fare. You raise your head. The door slams. Your passenger is already outside. Hmm. You lower your window. Ah, uh, miss? Her figure doesn't turn around, and she keeps walking towards the cathedral. Miss? You take off your seatbelt, but when you go to get out, you're stopped by a stabbing pain. Your eyes blur. You can't see the dashboard controls anymore. Your scar, it's burning. Itching. You breathe, slowly. Breathe out for seven seconds, in for seven seconds. You repeat the cycle until you recover your sight. You repeat the cycle until your fingers stop shaking. You breathe. You glance outside. The young woman has vanished. You turn the key in the ignition. You slowly recuperate from the last ride. From the last passenger. That woman was a total nut job, No doubt about it. You drive away from Notre Dame. Um, that wasn't a lot of heroes, dude. What do you mean, more than enough? Okay. That was barely any. That was super weird, super strange. And I think with that, that's a good spot for us to end today's episode of Night's Call. Hope you guys all enjoyed. If you guys have, make sure you guys have a like, leave a comment. Tell me what you think of today's episode, of course. And if you're new to my channel or have been watching me for a little while and you haven't done so, feel free to subscribe to me, AdSquash924, over on YouTube. And don't forget to ring the bell to get notified on my latest videos. On the next episode, we got more customers to talk to. Ideally, people we haven't met before. Unless we've met the same people that are our suspects or people we've only met in um, this scenario of this game. And I'll see you then. Goodbye, everybody.